So the major obstacle in uh, the universal achievement of Millennium Goal 4 and 5 targets has been the issue that countries with larger populations, larger economies, uh, those that have been up the developmental trajectory have been able to make progress. So a lot of the global progress on the Millennium Goals has been driven by China, by Brazil, by India, but there are also examples of countries that have made tremendous progress notwithstanding their limited economies, the Rwandas, the Bangladesh, the Costa Ricas and others. So it's been a mixed picture. But I would say that a major obstacle to universal achievement of the Millennium Goal 4 targets has been a lack of focus on reaching those who are not being reached, the marginalized, the poor, the impoverished, those living in different geographies, and also a lack of focus on scaling up, on ensuring that our evidence-based interventions and packages of care reach those who need to be reached at a reasonable proportion. So as you probably know, for many key interventions, our coverage rates in global numbers are less than 30-40%. So you cannot reach global targets without reaching everybody who needs to be reached. So that's a great question. So uh, you have to start with strategies that work for mothers. So increasing age at marriage. Improving family planning coverage so women have the choice and therefore are not subject to repeated pregnancies. Those are hugely important interventions for improving newborn maternal as well as newborn outcomes. Then in addition to this, ensuring that every woman delivers in a health facility, in a proper well-equipped health facility with good quality of care and a skilled birth attendant is one fundamental importance. And that skilled birth attendants also ought to have the training, the skills, the knowledge to take care of the newborn immediately after birth. As I mentioned, close to 3 million lives can be saved by just focusing on the day of birth. Then after that, breastfeeding. Early initiation of breastfeeding and exclusive breastfeeding for newborns can save a huge number of not only newborn deaths, but also child deaths. And to add to that, keeping small babies warm comfortable, keeping them with their mothers. None of these interventions require a lot of money. They require basically the knowledge and the political will to implement them at scale. So while you're right that much of the knowledge around interventions has been generated, but the knowledge, knowledge is always a moving target. So yes, we know what works, I don't think we know enough about how to implement some of this knowledge and we know equally less in terms of how to do it in different places. As you heard me mention, about a third of all the global burden of maternal and child deaths is in conflict areas. How much do we know about how to work in difficult geographies and broken health systems? We don't. So a lot of our effort and research over the next decade or so has to go into implementation implementing what we know and implementing it in various contexts and to have the humility that a lot of what we know in one particular area does not necessarily apply in another. So to have the, uh, the, the wisdom to work with communities, with civic societies in understanding some of their barriers and working with them to breach those barriers. So the first and foremost action required to fill the gap is to recognize that a problem exists. Many countries are just not aware that there is something called adolescence. They are either regarded by many countries as young adults or others as grown-up children. So health systems do not cater to the needs of adolescents and even less for adolescent girls. So that's an essential first step in recognizing the issue. Secondly, in working with various delivery platforms to reach adolescents. So while yes, you can reach many of them in schools, you will not reach those who are outside of schools. So for adolescent boys, they're either in the workforce as child labor or as girls in a marital framework as child brides. So we have to work with countries to ensure that education and the right to an education for girls is a fundamental right. And, uh, and thirdly, 
to have the knowledge around what are the common problems that adolescents have. They are not of the same nature as young under five children. So adolescents don't usually die of diarrhea and pneumonia, but they die because many commit suicide. Many have accidents and those accidents and suicidal behavior are very closely intertwined. Many girls are exposed to HIV at a very early stage or die of pregnancy related complications or abortions. Until we have a very good knowledge of what is it that affects adolescents, intervention strategies will be difficult to come by. So what is needed is a stepwise process of recognizing them as individuals with their own rights, speaking to them, to find ways and means of reaching them, and then implementing evidence-based platforms where we can. And lastly, we need a lot more research in this area. What we are talking about for adolescents is much, much, much less than what we know about women and children. So we do need to work with them to understand a lot more about what their problems are and where the solutions are likely to be successful. I think this is not impossible. There is already a lot of support at the highest level of protecting maternal and child health with a new global strategy for every woman, every child. And that global strategy will be ratified in September in New York. So I think without worrying too much about what else is there in the Sustainable Development Goals, we should focus on what we need to do for this new global strategy for women and children and to make sure that the inclusiveness of this strategy by including equity factors, including newborns, including adolescents, that that inclusivity improves and uh, that we have a clear strategy for monitoring and evaluation of our progress in this regards. So I personally am not worried. In fact, I'm very supportive of the Sustainable Development Goals. I think they reflect the reality of how health can be addressed in countries through what are not health-specific sectors, but health-sensitive sectors, sectors that relate to education, environment, climate change, water sanitation, hygiene, and, and other, other important empowerment indicators.